Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Breaking Down the Charts. Uh, it's been a really great week. We've seen a lot of new people come into the Mining Store Discord community and start getting involved with trading. There's obviously been a lot of opportunities with the volatility in the market and some of our new members have actually sent through some successful trades that they've done. So congratulations to you guys. As you can see at the moment, we've been welcoming you guys in. Uh, we got Kamakiri, um, we also had Leroy come through, Bug Sports, a whole bunch of new people coming through the Discord and being welcomed in. Welcomed in. Uh, and the feedback from you guys feeling comfortable um, and you know a safe place to actually trade now uh, has been really great. Uh, for those of you that are watching these series, breaking down the charts, um, but are not currently subscribed to our channel, channel uh, to never miss a video, please just subscribe to the, via the button on the screen right now, or just below you can subscribe via the channel. That way, every time I post a video, you'll be notified on your phone, um, and you'll never miss a trade. Of course, the best way to keep up to date with all of the trades and everything that's going on is by actually joining the Mining Store Discord, which is on the screen right now. Uh, and today, just before we get started, I'm actually going to run through a silver trade, um, which isn't in the cryptocurrency market, but we do cover forex, com commodities, property, and everything in the Mining Store Discord. So let's jump into it. Um, before we do today, we're going to be going through this silver trade. I'm then going to jump into Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, we're also going to be looking at some of the nodes that we're investing in at the moment, including Loki. Um, there's a really nice opportunity to get set up with the Loki node at the moment and Xenon. Uh, and then we're going to be jumping into RSR, going to have a look at Dodge um, and my favorite for the moment, which is TRB, which has had some amazing price action. So without for further ado, let's jump into it uh, and let's have a look at this silver trade that I'm talking about. So at the moment, as you can see, we're on the Mining Store Discord channel. Um, today, I've given everyone an update back uh, at the end of April and start of May as we kind of first went into lockdown. Uh, I did a bit of a summary um, uh, on why I'm investing into silver at the moment uh, as opposed to gold. Now, most people know when we go into crisis, uh, looking to commodities is, is a really good option uh, to protect yourself against things like inflation. Uh, buying things that have actually a physical value and, and a limited supply uh, protects you protects your wealth against inflation. So that's initially why I looked into silver. I'm just gonna click on the post right now where I first commented on silver and what I was actually looking into. So the first thing that I noticed, um, well, basically was the, the feds were printing a ridiculous amount of money. Um, you know, during the GFC, it actually took maybe a year or, or even two before we, we had these stimulus packages come out. Uh, but this time round, you know, they were obviously very scared and they, brought out ridiculous amounts of stimulus. So instantly alarm bells went off. I wanted to protect my um, wealth and obviously not, not get run over by inflation. Uh, and so I was looking at, at gold originally. Uh, but what caught my attention was the gold and silver ratio. So usually the gold silver ratio historically uh, has actually been, and we can open this chart here. This is what I posted in April. Uh, this is the ratio between gold and silver where one ounce of gold uh, historically, as you can see, would get you maybe on a, on on a, on, a, on a low 50 um, ounces of silver, um, or well, that's a high I guess, and then on a low uh, 113 ounces uh, of silver, it, it, it broke out of this kind of regression channel. Um, so ridiculously undervalued silver is right now, um, or was back in, in April, uh, May territory. And so this actually caught my attention and I started to look into why that actually was. Now, what I kind of figured out was, um, you know, there's a couple of factors. One, you know, some people were just saying that, you know, silver is a poor man's um, gold uh, and it's not really as, as valuable as gold. Um, but really what I wanted to look into was more uh, surrounding JP Morgan. So JP Morgan have actually been stockpiling silver since around about 2011. Um, I'm going to go through this in, in more detail in the charts once I open up, I open up these charts here. Um, but basically they have been stockpiling silver since 2011 and actually shorting the market uh, and that's pushed down the price of silver significantly significantly um, as we can see on this chart right here um, if we zoom out from 2011 it's pushed down from $42 all the way down to 13 ounces so basically what I've been doing is I've actually started to, to buy up silver here um, and I'm holding it basically waiting for this gold silver ratio uh, to come come back to closer to 80 80 to the 50 territory at the, at the moment we're at 93 is the is the ratio so I bought in when it was about 115 or 120 uh, as you can see this point here so that's March 
um, territory here. It was at 120 on the cursor, uh, and now it's pushed down. You know, pushed down, pushed down, pushed down over 30 30 day. Um, all the way down to 93. So it's getting closer to where I will sell that silver into gold. Um, that's kind of the play here. Uh, but again, that's just a bit of a recap of, you know, getting the information first of what, what we're looking at, um, of things even outside the, the crypto market. So that was my post back then. Uh, today, I've done a big recap of, of that and basically filled everyone in on, on the position saying that it's going well uh, and obviously the members are getting that firsthand. Now Mad Jay who's actually typing right now as you speak helped me with a lot of this analysis so he will be, as just said, nice Will. Um, he will no doubt be commenting on this uh, but let's actually go and have a look at the charts. Now I think I might actually put a pop up on the screen for um, a seven day trial into the mining store discord. Uh, so at the moment if you want to jump in on that and get involved and meet all these uh, amazing members, uh, some of the people that I've met in here have honestly increased my kind of investment knowledge substantially. There's some great mentors for me in here, including Grant, Mad J, um, Squats and Coins, the whole whole range of people who have really helped me out uh, with my trading. So definitely worth jumping in here, guys. Nothing to lose on a seven-day free trial. Hopefully, you might even make you a bit, bit of money in, the, in, in off the um, trades recommended in here. Um, but yeah, definitely jump in here, particularly if you want to get involved with the, the cryptocurrency space. But let's go over and look at the chart. So we've kind of been over this gold-silver ratio. Let's move on to actually what silver's doing. So it's been suppressed over the years. Um, now this is where I entered. Now the reason I entered here, this price capitulation was due to you know the global capitulation after we entered into a pandemic. Um, I didn't really want to catch a falling knife, so to speak. So I waited for the price to recover a bit. As we can see, we start getting this positive price action here, and then this is is where I had my kind of um, resistance line. This is the, the level that I wanted to see us break above um, before, like right here. See how the market's clearly, you know, bounced off this point and broken this point multiple times. That's the point that I wanted to see break before I actually entered my position. As soon as that happened, I bought my um, my first position in, in silver. And since then, we've kind of just rallied on uh, upwards. Now, the next point that I want to break through before I buy another position of silver is through this 19 ounces. If we break that 19 ounces, ounce level. Um, if I just zoom out on the charts now, one moment, let's pull this in a bit. If we break through that $19 um, dollars an ounce level, I think we could start pushing all the way up uh, to the next Fibonacci level at around $24. Now, um, if I go through this is kind of the evidence of JP Morgan, um, not really the evidence, but a summary um, of JP Morgan and how they're stockpile stockpiling silver uh, and this 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 video here is uh, the one that I I want you guys all to watch if you're interested in kind of getting involved with this trade. I'm going to leave this link in the description uh, of this video. Definitely worth your time to go through it. Mad J actually sent this one to me. Um, I mean, from about two minutes all the way to 20 minutes, uh, so around 18 minutes of, of this video, you're going to get a really good understanding of what's actually going on with silver and why it could be such a good play. Um, I mean, the title of the video is basically "When Shorting Stops, Silver Pops." Um, and essentially what, what that is saying is, you know, JP Morgan have, have been sh stockpiling their silver uh, since about 2011. They've then shorted the market to push the price down. And now they're going to probably stop shorting that market and let uh, let the market have a bit of a run. Okay, so that's a really, really sure. I put a lot more detail in, in the mining store discord if you want to jump in there and have a read through. Um, but yeah, that's probably enough for silver before we go into our cryptocurrency analysis. So... Looking at um, Bitcoin, obviously things have been pretty stable. There's not really too much going on at the moment. It's pretty boring, to be honest. Um, we like to see a lot more volatility in the cryptocurrency market. Uh, at the moment, I'm kind of just holding my Bitcoin. I'm not hedging my positions. Um, I'm, I'm not adding to my positions. Just holding the Bitcoin that I do have. If we get closer to this 200-day moving average and maybe get a wick down, I may actually start hedging my positions in case there's a capitulation down to this kind of 5,000 level. I doubt that will happen, to be honest. I don't. I really don't think so. I think things are looking quite bullish for, for Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency in general at the moment, um, given what's going on in, in, the, in the global scenario. Uh, you know, people are looking for a, an alternative financial system, I suppose, or at least exposure to it. Uh, they want more control of their money, and I think that's a really great case for, for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So, yeah, overall, quite bullish, um, quite boring at the moment. Not going to comment too much more on Bitcoin. Uh, but Ethereum is looking really, really strong, leading into Ethereum 2.0. I'm really stacking in, 
in lots of 32 Ethereum so I can um, stake nodes uh, when that comes around. So yeah, basically adding to my positions, I think the price action is looking great. It's kind of heading up on, on, on this channel. Uh, definitely worth for those who don't have any exposure to Ethereum, really start thinking about trying to get 32, uh, you know, 30, lots of Ethereum in 32 um, and you'll be able to stake an Ethereum node. Now, when Ethereum goes to 2.0, uh, you're hopefully going to earn between 3 and 5% interest uh, on your Ethereum, which is nothing to sneeze at. Um, I would be holding Ethereum anyway long term for a 3-5 year play. Uh, when things really kick off in the cryptocurrency industry, which I think they already have actually, um, you know, Ethereum is one of those coins that I think could actually return back to its all-time highs. Uh, I think it got a close to around 1,000 US dollars or even higher, 1,300 US dollars a, a coin. I'm looking at the Ethereum BTC chart at the moment. Um, but yeah, I definitely think Ethereum can test those all-time highs again uh, and definitely worth having exposure to it. And as I said, on top of that, if you have 32 Ethereum, you can actually stake that and earn 5% or so interest. I'm not sure exactly what it will be. You have to wait and see. Um, now, on that note, that is actually a service that we're going to be offering through our partner uh, at Mind Digital. Okay, so you won't have to run your own server, you won't have to set up the staking requirements, be good at coding, anything like that. All you will need to do is deposit, just like in any other exchange, 32 Ethereum into our partnered exchange. And we will actually, as a team, we're going to partner up to do this, run your Ethereum node for you, and you'll get paid the, the interest on it minus a, a, um, a hosting fee. Okay, so that's a really, really strong service. We do it with Loki. I'm going to go through Loki next in a bit more detail. But yeah, again, guys, can't stress enough. Really start to think about uh, getting that 32 Ethereum. Now, if you can't get 32 Ethereum, Ethereum, we potentially will be running a bit of um, like a um, uh, community nodes. So if you have, you know, three to five Ethereum, you can't afford the full 32 or you don't want to have exposure to full 32, uh, you may be able to compile that with other members um, and we'll host a node for you as well. So cool little service. We did that with Loki and it was much appreciated by our members. So again, yeah, look to, look to start stacking in, in lots of 32 Ethereum if you can. Now, Loki, on the other hand, looking a little bit sad, but nevertheless, when things are looking sad, there's always opportunity. And basically what's happened at the moment is Loki is kind of pushing down to this strong support line here. Um, if we just kind of zoom out, a little, it might squeeze things together a bit. So Loki's obviously had a massive dip, come back down. It's kind of been on a, a bit of a downward trend, um, but overall, you know, it's held this price level quite well, okay? Uh, now. I'm, full disclosure, today I'm actually going to buy a full Loki node, which is 17,000 Loki. I think this is a really good price to enter in. Um, I mean, I'll be, you know, fingers crossed and hoping that uh, Loki will start to go up in, in value and, th and that um, node that I bought will, will um, increase on the capital gain side. Uh, but if it doesn't and it crashes down to this next support level, I'll actually buy another Loki node down here for another 17,000 uh, Loki, okay? After that, I'll be I'll be holding off and just kind of waiting for recovery. If it kept going down, then that's the risk that I, I took, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is a like kind of a, a dollar cost average or kind of martingale strategy, I guess. Um, but yeah, I tend to... Yeah, I, I really like this project. I think it's doing really well in the privacy space. They've got plenty more to offer um, with their Loki Messenger and Loki Net services. Uh, if you don't know much about the Loki project, I strongly suggest you go and watch my interview with Simon Harmon, um, where he pretty much breaks down the whole project and gives you a bit more insight. It's a great starting point. Or just join the Mining Store Discord. We have a dedicated server for, for Node discussion, um, and there's plenty of information about Loki in here. Uh, Jagerman, who's actually one of the head devs at Loki, is in here, and you can directly speak to him. Um, so yeah, strongly recommend that you kind of um, get involved with Mining Store Discord to find out more information there. Alternatively, watch the free video on um, on YouTube with, with Simon Harmon. Uh, but yeah, overall, let's just go into a little bit more analysis on, on Loki and, and what it actually has to offer. So if you do set up a full node and you stake it, minus uh, Mining Store's hosting fee of 15%, uh, you're actually earning every year 23% or nearly 20, well, 24% on your investment. Now that is absolutely crazy returns. Yes, full disclosure, you are exposed to you know a fairly high risk asset, um, which could you know halve in value um, or, or more. It could keep going down, um, but nevertheless, you know it also could go up. And 23 to 24% yield per year is nothing to be sneezed at, particularly when banks are offering you know your one percent if if you're kind of lucky. Okay, so yeah, it's really really good project in the privacy space. It, 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 I think it's undervalued at the moment. I honestly think its true value is closer to like $1 US. We're on a Bitcoin, a Loki Bitcoin chart at the moment, um, but it's about 30 
30 US cents or 40 US cents at the moment. Uh, I really think it, it could get to one one US um, one US dollar per per coin. So yeah, great time to start if you if you're on the sidelines having to think about it. I'm I'm going to be purchasing. You might want to think about it, um, or potentially if you want to be a little bit more risk averse, you may wait, uh, but you also may miss out trying to enter in here. I'm going to enter in here, and if it does enter in this kind of channel down here, I'll buy another um, node down here. Okay. So that's Loki. I love my um, yield earning coins um, that I can lock up in nodes and, and earn yield on, particularly when I think they have a high chance of um, potential capital growth. Going into Dogecoin, so we had that massive pump uh, on the back of TikTok, which I still find ridiculous, but nevertheless, I was never really in this coin um, for the fundamentals. I really was in it for the technical analysis and that pattern of these pumps that I was I was picking up on, um, trading in and out, you know, nice 30% pumps. I was doing really well on it. Again, I sold a little bit early. I think I sold around about this mark here, a bit of a break above that initial um, pump and miss out on, on this gain here. Uh, nevertheless, as you can see, you know, I was kind of right that it was on the back of something a bit ridiculous which is a TikTok pump um, yeah for those of you who don't know TikToks and, and uh, like a social media type app that where people post video short videos um, and yeah I just didn't think that was you know a reason to, to sustain this price though I think a lot of stupid buyers or um, un, you know irrational buyers uh, would have entered the market here okay so I, I sold off and missed on out on the top you can never pick the top though guys and you don't go broke taking profits uh, it did actually crash all the way back down to lower than where I sold so that's a good thing Thing. At the moment, I'm sitting on the sidelines. I just want to see if we, you know, test this kind of resistance that it broke out and see if it breaks back down into it. Um, if it did come as low as here, I would definitely look to, to buy some more dodge again. At the moment, I'm just sitting on the sidelines, seeing, you know, how price action goes. I'm not really too fast. I've got my uh, money in plenty of other areas uh, at the moment. Um, yeah, just watching dodge on, on, on the sidelines for the moment. RSR, it just keeps on pumping. Um, I had some, you know, fairly concerning news from, from RSR and I sold out, unfortunately. Uh, you know, potentially I regret my decision a little bit, but nevertheless, uh, I think it was the, the, the right move. Um, but I do want to get back in this coin. I really, really like it for the medium to long term. I'm just waiting for that opportunity to come back up. Hopefully for, for me, I guess, um, it, it does come back down to this kind of mark uh, here that I've got marked. Uh, but if it doesn't, you know, I might have to bite my tongue and just gain exposure back to, to RSR again. Um, yeah, not too much more to, to comment on, on this one. Uh, some of the Discord members didn't sell um, when I sold, so I'm really happy for them. They've had some unbelievable games. Some of them were just talking this morning. I might even be able to grab it quickly in altcoin trading. That's probably part of the little intel to come in there. Uh, yeah, so some people are up 7x. Um, some people are, are even up 10x. I think Mad J posted that he was up, uh, oh yeah, 10x at, at the moment. Um, so really good stuff to the guys in there. Um, really happy for them. I think I sold at about 100% uh, gain. Let me just have a look. I bought in here and sold at about, yeah, uh, maybe here. Yeah, I think I had about a, about a 10x, but I got in a little bit earlier than um, everyone else. Actually, it was this point here. Yeah, so it's sold at about a 10x, but got in a bit earlier than everyone else. Um, but yeah, really happy to see those people that have had this huge run all the way. Some people are still holding, so around 400%, so 40x. So really good stuff to them. Um, sorry, that was, yeah, 4x. So that's good, good for them. But moving on from RSR, let's have a look at Teller. Now, Teller is a project that we've been mining for some time, so I do understand the tokenomics of this coin quite well. Um, just to start off, uh, you know, letting people know that to, to actually mine this coin, you, you currently need to hold 1,000 TRB. Uh, to set up a successful pool, you need to have around about 5,000 TRB um, in, 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 that, in, in that pool. Now, TRB at the moment is valued at about 15 US dollars after this huge pump here. Um, so that's quite a substantial amount of money to actually set up one of those mining pools. So at the moment, there's only really private mining pools. I think there's one public pool out there, um, which has a really high uh, maintenance fee. 
um, on, on, on board. But overall, basically what's happening is to actually mine TLB, that requirement is going to go up to 6,000 um, TLB per, per node and you need five of those to successfully um, mine it as a pool. So I think that's what's causing a bit of this pump here. Although I was speaking to the Mandalore, um, who's one of the, the top devs at, at, this, at the TRB project, and he was actually mentioning that it's really just all Oracle projects that are doing really well. Um, so Chainlink, for example, has had this massive pump. Uh, uh, yeah, basically Oracle projects, they, they act as like, um, like a, a, a verifying um, data point. So they all, uh, Chainlink and, and Teller, uh, they are responsible for like off-chain um, protocol where they the nodes will verify the, the price of Bitcoin from various sources um, and then pass that on to other smart contract um, pro projects. So this is doing really, really well. Um, I want to run through a bit of the analysis for TRB. Uh, we've got here both Fibonacci retracement as well as the pitchfork set up here. Okay. So massive price pump, massive, massive, massive. Um, in the past kind of week, we've gone up nearly another 100%. 100 um, so a bit more than two, about two weeks, we've gone up another 100, 100 to 120%. And we've reached this kind of 1.618 Fibonacci level as well. So the way that I put this Fibonacci in is I have done it from the two major points of, of price action. So from an all-time low to an all-time high. So I'm going to redo this for educational purposes. Um, if I pop this one here and just pull it up to this point here and, and put, sorry, other way around. If I pop this one here and put down to this point here and then just pull it across. That's how we get that, that Fibonacci level. So zero is down the bottom here. It's pushed all the way up to 100% um, retracement here, which is which is this point here. Now we had quite a deep retracement here, so we shouldn't expect too much of a price pump. This is a really unusual price pump based on that um, tokenomics that I was explaining there with the, the node requirement going up. Also based on the um, amount of new supply going into the market um, decreasing. So mining rewards are de uh, decreasing substantially uh, and that's causing a massive price pump here. So honestly, I mean, this is a really hard one. I, I feel like this is quite overvalued, but recently I uh, sold early on RSR. I also sold early on Dodge. So maybe stupidly, I'm holding my position um, here on, on TRB. Uh, I did actually sell out a little bit, um, you know, at around about this price point right here um, on the 1.618, uh, but I'm holding the majority uh, of, of my funds um, here now. So let's see what happens. It could come crashing down. It could keep going. Uh, I think the tokenomics are, are in place to have this coin actually keep on, on running up um, as well as going into version 2 or V2 algo uh, where it's going to require 6,000 TRB. I really think that we could get even further price action. That along with a lot of the Oracle coins are doing really well at the moment. Um, let's see what we can do and ride this one a bit further. As I say though, looking at this pitchfork, it's kind of got to that median level. So we could get a, a further run up to the top here. Usually when we get to this median level it acts as a bit of resistance and we pull back so i will not be surprised if we pull back down to this 1.618 fib level if we do for those of you that aren't involved you could potentially look to buy in um, obviously it's quite high risk after having such a, a large price increase um you know over 100 in, in, in a short amount of time uh but nevertheless you know sometimes uh, that you know you've got to take a risk to to get a good gain. So yeah, overall TRB I'm really, really happy with. That's a bit of the fundamentals of why this, this coin is, is pumping in price. There was a lot of people trading link in the Discord as well. Personally, I am not trading link at the moment. I should have bought in when it dumped in price significantly after um, we kind of went into a global pandemic. Um, this coin is, it is a really great coin. It's well more established than TRB, although they're both Oracle coins. Uh, I definitely want to gain exposure to this coin again. However, I'm just waiting for it to kind of dump in price a, again a bit, come back down to this more regression line um, before I re-enter into the market. Uh, did you buy it? Not too much to comment here other than, you know, it's still going in this upward trend. If it does break this upward trend down to the downside, then I think that we probably will test this banner uh, again in here. And that's where I might enter in 
uh, another position for for Digibyte. Otherwise, I'm just holding this for the long term. I think you know there's plenty of, of legs to run for Digibyte. I think it's doing great things. It's been listed on Binance recently. It's look, looking like it could be listed on Coinbase. Um, yeah, I, I I think this is a great great project. It's got a great community behind it. Really decentralized coin. There's a lot of things that I love about this project. Not too fussed about short term price action. Uh, I'm really just holding this for the long term now. Uh, having said that, I would like to see a bit of um, higher price action for our miners. Uh, you know, if this coin can go 100% up in value, um, then that can really help out a lot of a lot of our miners at the moment. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, not too worried about Digibyte. I think it's gonna it's got a great future ahead of it. Uh, and as I said, not too worried about the short term price action. Uh, as for CKB, not too much to comment on CKB other than I feel like you know it needs to hold this value. If it does break again, we could be going back into this kind of long-term downward trend. Uh, I'd really like to see it hold the value um, on, on this 55 level um, and kind of push through to the 61 level. Uh, but nevertheless, you know we can't. We just got to have to wait and see. It's sitting on uh, this. Uh, moving average line right now, uh, so let's just be patient and, and wait and see what happens. Other than that, we've got Xenon as well. I just sold a lot of my yields off uh, for my Xenon node, um, cashing in a little bit there. I'm willing to hold my initial stake in the Xenon node, uh, and I'm de-risking myself by selling off the yields. It's been a great investment so far. Overall, it's down in terms of capital gain value, but I don't think Xenon has seen its full appreciation in price gain just yet. Um, so yeah, in terms of um, percentage gain uh, and yields earned, I'm doing well. Uh, but yeah, need to see a bit more price action to, to really cash in on this investment. Again, longer term investment and being patient for this one. That's it for today, guys. Hopefully, I mean, there was a lot of um, breaking down. It was good to add in a little bit of uh, like silver analysis as well. One of the plays that we put in there. Again, can't put enough emphasis on how important it is to be a part of the Mining Store Discord to really get the full value out of, out of um, the community that we, we have on offer. Uh, if you want to be successfully trading, um, you know, have a safe place to bounce ideas, uh, you know, have a lot of people doing a lot of research for you, I strongly recommend that you try out that seven day free trial. Come and join us. Um, as you can see earlier, we welcome in pretty much absolutely everyone or well, not pretty much actually we do welcome in everyone and get you involved uh, and you've got a whole heap of people look look how many people there are on the side that you can message um, get involved with and really improve your your trading add your ideas uh, and benefit from theirs um, great services like grant from mind digital who can help you with um, OTC trades for crypto crypto loans um, we're gonna be doing uh, node node services for, for, for through mind digital uh, soon uh, coin developers in here, expert, uh, you know, private equity um, trader, Mad uh, You know, there's just a whole whole heap of people in here that bring a lot of a lot of value. Would love to see more people come in there. I look forward to meeting you once you do. As I said, it's a free trial, got nothing to lose, and I'll be back for next week's episode of Breaking Down the Charts. Good stuff, guys. <laughs>